Hello, I'm John, and welcome back to Dr. Hollowed. In today's episode, haunted trail workers share the craziest things they have seen while on the job. Please drop a like and subscribe. Worked in a haunted attraction for five years and one comes to mind. I played a stereotypical crazy doctor in a scene with other actors. The basic layout is you would enter the hospital, get on an elevator, fake, go down a toxic hallway, and finally meet me. The walls were thin and made of plywood. I remember one night, group walks in already screaming. I think awesome, easy scare and easy group. They step in the elevator and lose it. I hear them run out the elevator and toward the hall. I get ready in my normal position. I would stand behind the door to my office and scare people out of the scene, this didn't happen. This group crashes through the wall. I scream like a little girl, which scares them more. They run through another wall. At this point, I just want them out to get my scene back in order. But then another actor from another scene shows up at the exit with a chainsaw. The groups run through their makeshift doors back through my scene. We had to then scare them back through the scene to get them to move on. People were banned from bringing chainsaws in my scene after that. Worst thing I witnessed while working in one, aside from the typical piss slash shit slash vomit, was this one time towards the end of our run, we would go for about 4 to 5 hours a night if it was busy, reset times in between groups was exhausting, some really horrible kids came through kicking the sets and props and trying to hit some of the actors. One of the girls, B, had her own room in which she sat in a really dark corner on a metal barrel. She would normally scare people by rattling it or knocking a stick against it to get their attention, but in doing this, this one time, these kids ran over to her and started laughing and trying to choke her out. We only found out about it because the next group that followed these kids found B passed out on the floor. Security grabbed those fuckers and the police came and took them away, not sure what happened to them. But B ended up having to go to hospital and didn't return for the rest of the season which was sad, because despite her scare being very simple it was so good at getting people moving through the corridor. It was a shit night. I worked at the Markov's Haunted Forest in Maryland which is widely regarded as one of the best haunted attractions on the East Coast. It has two paths that go winding through the forest filled with different scenes and props ranging from church basements, to a creepy monkey village, to just narrow pitch black tunnels you navigate by feel. I was in the church basement scene this night and I had a sweet spot where none of the lights touched making it pitch black. People would walk up to me suspicious that someone would be there, but it really was pitch black. They would feel reassured because they were so close they would have to see someone if they were there, but no pay it's me. Tons of great scares. The trails are always busy from 8pm to 1am, but this night there was a strange gap of no people for roughly 30 minutes. That never happens. Finally a family came along, two teen girls and their parents. I got these girls good. Real good. Like I could see the imminent death in their eyes good. Then after they passed it was another 30 minute pause of people only to have the normal flow of people return. Later on we found out that it was the Obama girls going through the trails with Secret Service acting as their parents. No one was told ahead of time for security reasons obviously and we only learned after the fact. The gaps of people were to allow them to slip in and enjoy the trail without anyone else having the opportunity to realize who they were and interrupt them. So I got to scare the hell out of the Obama girls. That was cool. I worked a haunt one year and was set up in a butcher room. I had a pig mask and a table saw, no one cared where the saw sound was coming from. Just that it was loud and scary, but the best part was the guy missing part of his arm working my room. He had lost a portion of his arm right below the elbow, still had his elbow, and about two inches of forearm. He'd sit on the floor, and prop a fake severed arm near his stump, and pretend to be cutting through his arm with a knife. Attendees could hear almost there. Almost there. As they walked into the room. Once he grabbed the fake arm with his good hand, and started waving the stump, I'd see full-grown men push their girlfriends and wives away and run at full speed. It was hilarious. In sixth grade, our elementary school did a haunted house fundraiser. It wasn't anything big, they set up a maze in one of the classrooms and has a bunch of decorations and people popping out of places to scare everyone. It was actually pretty well put together and scary. I volunteered to work because I love to scare people. Anyways, my job was to monitor the maze and help anyone or fix stuff. I brought my werewolf mask and I would stand still like a statue and tap on people's shoulders when they turned around or jump at them if I had the chance. There was this dad walking his young son through, and it was obvious he was terrified. His dad was comforting him by saying that it was fake and he shouldn't be worried. I didn't want to scare him so I just stood still. His dad then pointed me and said look, 
the werewolf is fake too and then to show how fake I was, he smacked my mask. It wasn't hard and didn't hurt, but my mask and glasses came right off. He apologized left and right saying he didn't know I was real. I wasn't mad or anything, I just thought it was hilarious that I actually looked like a prop. When I worked at a haunted house I was put in a scene with one of my good friends and my twin sister. They decided to put us in a doll house with lots of mangled porcelain dolls and stuffed animals with their body parts missing. My good friend is a very small girl and she could fit into the smallest of places. There was this grandfather clock that we had in the first room and she would remove the pendulum and hide in there while we shouted at patrons to play hide and seek with us. She would scare so many people with that spot it was unreal. We also played the twin thing off as much as possible, both me and my sister being small as well, I would hide behind a small dresser and get a jump scare as soon as a group came through. Right after my scare my twin would get them from the other side of the room and we would come together like the twins from The Shining. You wouldn't believe how many people are scared of little kids, I had a blast making people fall on their asses while also mindfucking them with the twin thing. Ah fun times. I was volunteering at a haunted trail when I was 12 because we had an assignment that entailed doing community service for school. Hearing this, I thought the best thing I could do was working for free as a zombie. What could be better? So the night rolls around and I'm fitted with my zombie costume. We walk out into the woods where I'm led to my coffin behind a chain that separates the trail from the path that folks walk on through the forest. When the tour guide would show up with a new group of people, they would wave a flashlight near me as my cue for me to pop out of the coffin and hit a fake dismembered leg against the side. Night starts, a few groups go by and I'm feeling pretty good about the whole thing. About halfway through the night, I see the flashlight and do my usual routine. A little kid shrieks and for God only knows what reason, the kid's dad looks at his son, looks at me and starts sprinting at me. He clears the chain easily, runs right up to me, pulls me up out of the coffin with his bare hands, puts his finger in my face and says, cut it out you little shit. He then walks back to his son, consoling him, and they walk back through the trail. I was flabbergasted and I just left the trail right then and there, walking past groups in full zombie attire. I then walked home, took off everything and just sat stunned in my bathroom trying to make sense of everything slash not cry. To this day, I still have absolutely no fucking idea why a guy would take his five-year-old kid into a haunted trail and start physically roughing up the ghosts and goblins working in there. I don't know what happened with that father and son, but the attraction after me was a guy dressed as Leatherface, running out of the forest with a real chainsaw. Can only imagine. Worked at a haunt for five years. Had to quit after my last year cause of two incidences that I caused on accident. Before the stories I need to paint a picture. I'm 6 feet 4 inches and close to 400 pounds with a 2 foot tall mohawk at the time. First incident a co-worker was traveling through the house using pop doors to get through quicker to their room. I heard them coming and figured I would try to scare them. They come in my hallway and I popped my head around the corner at them. He reaches for the wall as his whole body goes stiff and he falls flat on his face breaking his nose and going into a seizure. Later found out that he stopped taking his meds so I didn't feel as bad as I did when it happened. The second one was the last scare in a haunt that I ever did. An older gentleman and his granddaughter came were making their way to my hallway. I stood in the middle of the hallway so they could see me in the strobe light then jumped in my pop door to scare them. I pop out and they both stumble backwards into a corner. So I pin them in the corner with my arms yelling that they will never leave because I'm going to eat them alive. The man's eyes stared at me and slowly opened wider and wider before his eyes rolled into the back of his head as he slid limp down to the floor in the corner. I drop the act and grab his hand asking if he is okay and he doesn't respond. I yell for help and that we had a party down. The house owner and makeup artist come flying into the hallway telling me to get back. They call 911 and they get there a few minutes later. The EMTs tell us that he is having a heart attack as they get him on the stretcher. At that point I walked to the back room and sat down with a bottle of water and started to cry. I felt so bad that I took off my costume and left and never went back. Found out from a friend that the man came back a few weeks later to talk to me. He told them he felt bad that I quit and that out of all the haunted houses he had went to it was me that got him the best and he loved it. I still feel bad for both of those incidents almost 19 years later. My sister worked at a haunted house one year, when my twin brothers were 13 and the little one was 11. I was 20. The twins invited a couple of girls from school to go with us, with the hopes that they would get some clingy scared girls on their arms. I was taller. They clung to me, a woman. The twins were not pleased. The last scene was the one our sister was in. She's built like a linebacker, and the littlest brother was teeny. So, we're on a bridge through a black tunnel, with the wall splattered with black light paint, and actors in paint splattered black morph suits start edging towards us. Freaky shit. 
sister is one of them, and she leans over the railing and grabs our youngest brother and drags him off into the scene. The two girls flip shit and bolt. We find them outside, sobbing on one of the security guards that this kid got eaten by a set piece. Then the little one comes around the corner. The girls start fawning all over him, making sure he is all of his limbs, and he's looking directly at the twins with the biggest shit-eating grin I have ever witnessed. I was never so proud of my siblings. I used to work in a haunted house, I was made up to look like a corpse in what looked like a locked cage-style grave, but the chain was layered so it didn't actually connect the door to the side. I was dressed in a winding sheet spattered with fake blood, with a wig disguising my hair, which also shielded my eyes, so I could see when people came close, and FX makeup covering any exposed skin, so I looked like a dressed-up mannequin. I am very, very good at being still. People would get right up to where my hand was sticking out of the bars, jumping and shrieking when I sat up and reached for them, but the real fun started when that cage swung open. People would freak out then, one guy in particular. This big, burly dude was right up beside the door when I reached up and swung it open and as soon as he figured out I could, in fact, get out of my cage and come for him, he let out a scream and ran so fast he went through one of our temporary walls like something out of a cartoon. When I was a teenager, my younger brothers and I decided to set up our front walkway with some scare the trick-or-treaters props. First the setup. Our house had a front walkway that was bordered by the wall of the house on the left, and a rickety wooden fence with a gate on the right. The carport was on the other side of the wooden fence. The front door faced the carport and was directly across from the gate. Basically, you had to walk through a narrow hallway to get to the front door on the left, or through the gate to the carport on the right. My brothers hauled a record player onto the roof and had an album of spooky sounds that they put on. This was in 1975 or so and we were poor, so we didn't even have speakers. Just the loud, tinny sound of a portable turntable. We made a human figure of stuffed clothing and hung it by the neck from the rafters of the walkway. Brother Bob rigged little red lights for eyes. Brother David built a coffin and placed it on the side of the house in the walkway. He dressed himself as Dracula and took his place in the coffin. Bob dressed himself as some sort of monster and then draped chains all over his chest and the gate, essentially chaining himself to the fence. I dressed as a witch and waited at the door to pass out candy. The overall effect from the street wasn't too intimidating, just the music and the dead hanging body. The plan was to scare the bejesus out of the kids after they passed the entrance. And scare them we did. Now, remember this is 1975. Parents stood at the sidewalk if there were parents in attendance at all. These brave little kids walked up our sidewalk with both eyes fixed on the dead body. Once they got past that horror, they were now in the walkway when David would sit up in his coffin, scaring them into running toward the front door. Once there they never even saw Bob until he lunged at them, the chains holding him back. I would open the door, cackling like the witch I am, to give them candy, however, the poor traumatized kids would blast into the house screaming and crying. Not a one of them would agree to go back out the front door, or come near me, either, so my mother had to escort them through the kitchen and out into the carport so they could run screaming into their parents' arms. We were a success. Every kid in our neighborhood probably had nightmares about us that night. We never did it again though. It was a one-night show. But, our legend lived on. From 1975 until they sold the house in 1988, my parents never had a single trick or treater again. Mom would stand at the door with her little bags of candy and hear the kids screaming at their parents to run past the house. Nobody came to the door. Nobody. Ever. Again. I used to work at a popular Halloween attraction called the Slaughterhouse. If you're in Arizona, you've probably heard of it. Technically I was a volunteer but they donated money to my school if we worked so it counts to me. I was working there before it was all set up as a Halloween attraction, at the time it was just an empty, abandoned slaughterhouse that people used to have raves in. And even without all the spooky shit put up and people running around in straight jackets, that place is creepy as fuck. My classmates and I were charged with cleaning that place up and we found some weird ass shit in there. Firstly, we had to clean off the roof balcony. It was covered in mummified dead cats. I have no clue why there was so many dead cats up there, but it was very chilling. On the second floor, there was a chapel. I'm not really sure why a slaughterhouse needed a chapel, but there was one in there. That room was absolutely horrifying. It was uncomfortably dark in there, and the moment you crossed the threshold of the door you immediately felt freezing. I went in there once alone and I could see my breath. We ended up leaving it be because no one wanted to go in there, we just left the pews be. During the actual haunts, there was a lot of mishaps that had never happened before. And I worked the haunt when it was at different locations, nothing like this shit ever happened before. One part of the haunt has a room called the plexiglass room. This shit was sturdy, 
It was basically a huge thick window and people in straight jackets stood behind it and screamed, threw themselves at it, and threw various shit in the room, chairs, barrels, etc., at it as people walked past. I literally hit that thing with a hammer before and it was completely fine. Well the first day we open, one of the actors throws a plastic jug at that plexiglass and it shatters all over a bunch of people walking through and we have to shut down that part of the haunt and clean it all up. The next thing that happens happen maybe a week later. A group of girls are walking through the haunt and everything is fine and they're finishing it up. At the exit there's no actors, so as not to scare people and make them fall down the stairs. Well something spooks this girl and she books it out of the haunt, trips, and falls over the railing and lands on her neck. We have to shut down the haunt again, and I think she may have broken her neck. I don't know, we didn't get any info after an ambulance took her away. Then there was just various parts of the set falling over, actors getting injured, a bee flew up my nose while I was working, and actors getting scared shitless. I'm 100% sure that place is haunted or cursed or something. There's been quite a few deaths there. Back when it was an actual slaughterhouse, an employee slipped on the old lift in the building, fell off, and the lift crushed him. My boyfriend's father is a paramedic, and often had to respond to people ODing back when the slaughterhouse was used for raves. I won't go back in there, even to enjoy the haunts. That place is fucking creepy. Worked at a haunted house a few years during high school. To get a mental image, to get to where I was you went through the house, a ton of rooms made of plywood, walk outside to a kind of hall, around two corners to where my friend was hiding, turn, there I was hiding in a church and around another corner to where my other friend was hiding with a chainsaw. A few stories, had an older lady, 50s 60s, walk past me and she goes, in the most upbeat voice I got so scared and there I almost farted. To her friend. I had to take a minute. There was some teenager guy going through, trying to be the cool kid, acting like a badass in front of his friends. Harassing monsters, trying to touch us, ect. The owner of the maze came through and grabbed this kid by his arm, and growls if you touch my monsters, I'll let them touch you. Then he points at me in my zombie outfit. I bit down on the blood capsule in NY mouth and grinned. This kid pissed himself and ran. One slow night around midnight we heard a group coming through the house. Now at the end of the hall outside the house, was a guy dressed as a scarecrow with a shovel. He was supposed to become animated and scare people, whatever. Anyway, he had fallen asleep leaning on his shovel, and when the group went by, he fell right in front of them, and scared the crap out of them. I miss working haunted houses. LOL. 11 years ago, I worked at a haunted house attraction. I started out in the corn maze dressed as a zombie but that was super boring. My friend's spot was inside the haunted house dragging a cable across a metal chain link fence that would shoot out sparks. He let me know that I could just come hang out with him, and scare people near him. Well, I took his advice literally, and would hang from the rafters by my arms in the middle of the hallway the guests had to walk past. I would wait until half the group would go past me, most just assumed I was another prop, since there were multiple fake bodice in the house. Well, at least once a night, I would get groped, half the time by guys trying to show their scared girlfriends that I wasn't real. I got more action there than I did in all of high school. I used to do a lot of haunted house work woods walks and stuff like that, but I also had the privilege of doing set design, makeup slash prosthetic work, and acting in a large haunted house set in an abandoned factory. The place was actually haunted, so we had some really weird shit go on noises from parts that we didn't use, things being moved, stuff like that. Ghost hunters from the area still do overnight stays there sometimes. In terms of normal crazy, lots of drunk people trying to fuck with the actors, climbing on props, etc. The incident that takes the cake happened at the factory haunt. We had a sort of dress rehearsal night where we let the families of our crew come through, the father of some poor kid threw a block of wood at this pregnant girl who was acting for us. After he finished the tour he left and didn't come back to pick the kid up. That was very sad, but I was happy that our haunt was a constructive escape for him. Currently working at my first haunt this year. So far, the craziest have been the drunk slash high people that come through really late at night, if we have a long line we stay open past midnight. This one drunk lady molested one of the male actors, a gay guy playing a crazy serial killer. Apparently, she told him, I'm Puerto Rican and I love me a bad boy, then grabbed his crotch. His character wears a straitjacket, so he couldn't use his hands to push her away. When she wouldn't stop, he eventually panicked, turned his face to the wall, and just started screaming at the top of his lungs until another actor was able to lure the group away. The poor guy was really traumatized. I told him that he should report the incident to management, but I think he just wants to brush it off. It can be a fun job. 
the camaraderie and energy of putting on a spectacle is a rush, but the work is exhausting both physically and mentally, and the conditions aren't always great. And now, I'm off to work at said haunt. Years ago I worked at my college's haunt. The theme was a haunted theater and the ending room was, of Kaus, in the auditorium in the building we were in. The finale had all of us basically chase the groups out of the haunt with me leading the charge, as I was a leatherface like prop builder slash mad doctor. With the stage set, we had a group with a father and his little girl. Everyone else ran off in the end but this guy kept his daughter, who mind you was only about 5 to 6 years old and scared shitless, in the room to get the most for his money, keep in mind admission was $5. She was crying and visibly shaken begging to go to the point where we all had to break character and calm her down. We took off our masks and such and kneeled down to her level and let her touch our props as we told her it was all an act. Not as dramatic as the other entries here, but knowing what kind of haunt this was, it was no place for a little kid, and that man was a supreme douche for forcing her to go in and get scarred for life. My job was to do the final scare at the exit to the trail. There was an old Ford tractor outside that appeared to be just decor, but I had it rigged to fire up remotely and run at full throttle with no mufflers. It was loud. The rear end was also blocked up, so the tires would be spinning. I would only save this scare for shithead kids, as the noise of this thing would tip people off going inside. So I'm sitting there, and these three teen boys started badmouthing the trail, well that was fucking lame. Rip off, etc. after being tough guys to Mr. Chainsaw. I hit the button. Instantly, the three punks are staring into the brights of a maniacal tractor. One freezes like a deer. Despite the trail exiting to an open field, one darts into the heavy brush. The other one turns around, and does a full sprint into some haphazardly arranged boards nailed to some trees to outline the exit. His face smacked into the top board and exploded in blood. Had to call paramedics, and cancelled the haunted trail permanently out of fear of being sued. My friends and I ran a neighborhood haunted house for nearly 15 years in NKC No. Probably the best story I have is the one where we had the chainsaw near the end of the house. It was a corner where the chainsaw guy hid and then a straight shot out the back to the exit. Well this one girl gets so freaked out by the chainsaw firing up that she takes off at a sprint and keeps running almost a full city block down the street from the haunted house. Went back in and high five chainsaw guy just for the laughs he provided. Second story, I was working as a slide safety operator at the Beast Haunted House in Kansas City and my job was mostly just being in the open and make sure people are being safe, I was still in costume but for the most part they just wanted me to make sure everything was okay. These three little 10 to 12 year old wise asses come down the slide and by the time the third gets down the others try to sneak up behind me scare me. I'm at this point bent over checking the slide so I just wait 2 seconds stand up to my full height turn around so I am literally lording over them and I had taken a huge lungful of air and just let out the most terrifying sound I've ever made in my life. Lost my voice for at least an hour, two of them just drop to the floor one of them starts crab walking backwards right into Jack the Ripper who was in my area as the main scare, needless to say I still think that he has stains in his underwear to this day. <laughs>